Praise be Jesus and Mary. In St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, he writes his famous hymn to charity. And this is a wonderful passage to read and reflect on because we know that Christian perfection and Christian holiness consists in the perfection of charity. But today's readings, from the first reading from the letter to the Hebrews, presents us with the beginning of what could be called the hymn to faith. When in this chapter 11 of the letter to the Hebrews, it talks about the faith of the ancients, of those holy men, and I'm not sure, maybe there were some women mentioned as well, and, and their heroic faith that they exercised in the, in the Old Testament. It says, because of it, the ancients were well attested. That is, because of their faith and their heroic faith, these ancient saints of old were well attested. What does that mean, well attested? Well, it goes on to say that uh, Abel was attested to be righteous because of his faith and his offering to God done in faith. And then with regard to Enoch, he was attested to have pleased God. And so these are examples that are being given to us so that we will follow their heroic faith and be righteous and be pleasing to God. And then it says, and through this, though dead, he still speaks. You see that? The saints that have gone before us still speak to us by the heroic lives, their examples, their example of faith, and that we can and should be inspired to imitate them. And so today the church celebrates one of the ancients, okay? This is Saint Polycarp, a saint from the first century. And that's when he was born. He died in the second century. But Saint Polycarp was actually a disciple of St. John the Evangelist. Right? He knew firsthand the beloved disciple, the one who rested his head on Christ's breast, close to the Sacred Heart. And so he received, right from the lips of St. John the Apostle, the Gospel, the teaching of Christ. And this is... Um, he is what is called an apostolic father. Okay, these saints who immediately followed after and knew the apostles. And so he being, was friends with St. Ignatius of Antioch, and we have some of their letters, some of their writings. And so we have these saints that follow up on the historical account that we find in the gospel. That's why these early saints are so important as a continuing testimony of what the apostles received from Christ and then handed down and what we have received through their successors. So St. Polycarp, again, a man of heroic faith. He was Bishop of Smyrna and after having lived a long life of heroic virtue, right, having received the, the white crown of martyrdom, he then goes on at the ripe old age of 86 to then receive the red crown of martyrdom. And so, having given his whole life to the gospel, the service of Christ, receiving that fine of cr final crown of red martyrdom, was almost natural, right? He had been preparing himself by this whole life of heroic faith and dying to himself and giving of himself to serve and teach and lead the flock of Christ. So when asked to give up his life, it's almost like, well, that's what I've been doing my whole life. And so the proconsul, when he's there before St. Polycarp, trying to induce him to renounce the faith. He said, uh, he tried to get him to curse Christ in order to obtain his freedom, and Polycarp answers, 86 years I have served him, and he never did me wrong. Right? The one who we serve is a wonderful master 
who loves us and cares for us. How can I blaspheme my King and my Savior after all of this time? And so the proconsul begins to threaten him with fire. I will burn you to death. That will make you renounce this faith of yours. And Polycarp responds that this fire lasts a little time, but the fire prepared for the wicked lasts forever. Right? You see how the saints have their heads on straight, right? They see things as they are and are able to then make their decisions by right reason, enlightened by faith, even if that means laying down their lives. And then finally, when he was brought to the, the stake that was all aflame, he thanked God aloud for letting him to drink of Christ's passion. And in fact, there was a miracle at the time when he was burned at the stake. So he entered in there and the fire became like uh, big sails around him, not touching him and his skin became all aglow and radiant. And so because he wouldn't burn to death, they came in and stabbed him to death, all right? And then afterwards, his followers came and took his relics, and he is among the first uh, whose relics were then revered by uh, the Christians who followed. And um, so St. Polycarp, kind of imitating our Lord, really. In the gospel today, we read of Christ's transfiguration. You see how the saints imitate Christ? And St. Polycarp, in the midst of this fire, is like transfigured, a prefigurement of the glory that he is about to receive in his soul and which he will later receive in his flesh at the resurrection of the just. And so we too shall maintain our constancy in the faith by love of Jesus Christ, who is its author and its perfecter. That also comes from the letter to the Hebrews. So we have the examples, the shining examples of all of these ancients, these saints who have gone before us. Let's find strength and inspiration in their example. Saint Polycarp, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.